with me to Mark chapter 14. And Terry, I'm going to ask you to read verses 22 through 26. <clears throat> While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So just to keep this story in context, this is after they have partaken in the Passover. And he has said, one of you will betray me. And they have questioned, is it I? All of them, is it I, is it I? And then he shares with them, it, it's, it's one of you. And then he explains, it would be better for that man if he had never been born. And then they partake of the Passover in which we, we replicate that when we partake of communion. And what we're doing when we do that is we are remembering his sacrifice and we are, from a certain point of view, partaking of um, the cup that he drank from and we are coming into community one with another, which I think is something that the church has not been very good, the church worldwide has not been very good about emphasizing is that the New Testament, the New Covenant, is so much about us being part of one another, being connected one with another. Um, and then, uh, and then they go into the garden and they sang hymns. It's pretty cool. So what? So when you look at these verses of scripture, what is God up to here? You see, does anything jump out at you? Was painting a picture of his. Maybe not painting a picture, but he's, you know, he's fixing to be hung on the cross. Right. So he's sort of like symbolically saying, I'm giving myself to you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Diane? He's presenting a structured way where they can remember him and what he's done for, for them. Right. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Please. He also points out that this is the blood of the New Testament. In other words, everything is fixing to be made new. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, and I don't know that they had heard that right. New Testament term before. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, John? This new covenant is because I think he's describing as best he can for the disciples to wake up and realize what's really going to happen. They're still not catching on that good. And I think he's trying to get there and say, this new covenant requires my death. Wake up. You know? Yeah, right? Um, as it says in the book of Hebrews, it requires the death of the testator, right? There's no, there's no will without a death. So, yeah, that's good. What about, what about man? What do you see? Uh, it doesn't really draw out a whole lot about who's here. We just know it's the disciples. But what do you see going on in them right here? What do you imagine is going on in them right here? Bridget? When they said, and then they sang, <coughs> so you, it makes you wonder, did they finally get it? Right. Did they finally? Do they understand? Do they 
understand. Right. Yeah, it does make you wonder. And I don't know if you could think of the, the hymn as praise, but if you could think of it as praise, it does let us know that regardless of the situation, we need to give him the praise. That's good. That's good. That's really good. Kevin? I don't know if they got it or not. I, I, I don't think they did, because uh, this was a very confusing evening. And Jesus is talking about someone betraying them, and they're all saying, what does it mean? They're not even sure of themselves, right. much less the, the, the guy next to them. And then he goes into this, you know, eat my body and drink my blood thing that they just went with. And um, so they had to be going in overdrive, thinking about what does all this mean? Yeah. And so when they do get to the um, Mount of Olives and, and they're, they're singing, I mean, there was a lot going on in their minds, I think, but I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just one of those crazy services that's like a lot of meat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mindy? I think the singing of hymns is just the tradition of celebrating the Passover and being delivered from Egypt. Mm -hmm. Um, because when they got to the other side of the Red Sea, they celebrated and sang and they played their music instruments right. and, and all of that. So that probably is just a, <clears throat> a mingling of him mentioning the new, but also you have the old to be part of in that, for them, that celebration. It was just something they, they've done right. since then. And, you know, I mean, obviously. I, I, would, I, I agree with Kevin. I don't really think that they. God, that the, I that think they got, got it was just right. a habit that they had as part of the celebration. Yeah, and you know the symbology was put all it was all put there on purpose. I mean, Christ did not just arbitrarily pick a feast day to die on. You know, it wasn't it, none of that was by chance. It had to be Passover. Yes, Sid. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, what were they thinking? If they were Jewish. Yeah. This is my body. Right. Take. Yeah. This is my blood. Take right. And drink. Yeah. Uh, Abomination. I give you a real quick story if you don't mind. I, I'm not so I'm not as good a storyteller as uh, Jed over there, but I'll, <laughs> it, it, and it's not humorous. Uh, <laughs> so I don't. Ha I, I'm, I'm not uh, uh, with that. But anyway, um, the, the we we had. Uh, years ago, the church of Pastor Julie, we rented uh, a big uh, uh, recreation hall. Okay. And we had a Jewish church there. And I became yeah. friends with the Jewish pastor. And then another church went in with us, I believe, didn't they? I believe they were Jewish. They might have been, but uh, we set up, we, we were going, they were going to prepare a Jewish Passover meal, yeah. of course, a authentic Jewish Passover. And uh, and we were going to do the communion yeah. with them there, with his congregation, <laughs> from the congregation in Palm City. Well, anyway, we set it up, and uh, we we went through the whole Passover, explaining the elements. By the way, Jesus didn't explain. Usually at the Passover meal, they always explain every time. The meaning of, right. of, of, of the different thing, the bitter herbs and, 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 and everything's there in the land. But anyway, uh, after that, I did the communion part, and I was explaining the elements to these Jewish people. And rem remember, honey, when we got, and, and I got to the cup. <laughs> of course, they didn't do it. We, had, we all did it. They were just for the leaders there, but we did our regular service with them there. And I'm telling you, got to the blood. One young girl, I, just, I held it up, and, and Jesus said, this is my blood. <laughs> and and then, then the drink, yeah. we all of it. And one little girl screamed. There was a young girl there. Uh -oh. and just screamed. Yep. Right? No, she was a teenager, wasn't she? It's been, it's been about... 30, 40 years, so it's not easy. <laughs> but I'm trying to recall, I just flashed in my mind. Yeah. But this is the point. Right. They drink my blood. And, um, it, you know, uh, the, the problem 
with the church today, I believe, is they don't understand. Mm -hmm. I've been to a lot of different churches after the Lord has me on the road uh, around different places. Uh, and I don't believe they grasp it. Most churches really don't, I don't believe, get it. I know uh, Wesley, John Wesley, which is so important, I, I ascribe to his meaning is that, you know, not the Catholics are transubstantiation, which it actually turns into the body and the blood, you know that, yeah. and substance, subsubstantiation, which is Lutheran and other uh, Martin Luther. But the West, John Wesley, uh, had something that I say is really the true meaning. And that is, it doesn't turn into the body and right. the blood. We know that. Right. Uh, but we just say it's a symbol. Right. And I say, no, it is far more than a symbol. We, we, we have accepted that as being. This is a symbol of his body. This is a symbol of his blood. Deeper than that. It's a spiritual thing. It doesn't, you know, I forget the word where it that turns into or the, where uh, something uh, can turn into the, another mm -hmm. material. But anyway, uh, it's far more than that. In fact, Wesley said we should have communion. We do communion every time the word is preached. Yeah. But, but always, at least minimum, once a week. And, uh, and you know, I, I believe there's, I, in fact, I know that we don't have it. I'm not saying here, I'm just saying, oh my right. God, no churches, you know, once a month, once a quarter week, whatever. A few have it, but they don't grasp the significance of what we're doing and the depth and the seriousness and, the, and, 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 and what can happen during that time in the mental health station. Right. The, the reality. And I, I, I don't know, go way too long. But, but it's so important to me when I saw we're doing this. Yeah. I said, fantastic. But there is so much more to this. And I think they haven't been explained. They don't know. I think most churches really do not know. They've never really. Well, I, there's definitely a difference between. Uh, Knowing and receiving, because you can have the knowledge oh, and yeah. still you can't, you don't fully comprehend. Bridget? Not exactly, but you know, considering it would be considered an abomination to them, it, that was one of the um, examples when obedience mm -hmm. is better than sacrifice. Oh, see, they yeah. may not have, they may have thought, but because Jesus told them this yes. is what they did. Right. Yeah. So sometimes we do things out of obedience, whether we have the complete and full understanding of it. Right. Or not. That's good. Yeah. Um, in Revelation 1 and 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. <clears throat> and when I went back in the Old Testament, um, in um, Leviticus 11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. The life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And Jesus put that right. inside of them, right. his life. Yeah. When he said, "This, this is my blood." Right. That's really good. That's really good. Because it was an invitation to partake in in that new life. And to Sid's point earlier, there are a lot of things you know we that the church um, tends to see as symbology. Because they don't know, because it's hard to teach experience. You can't teach That's experience, true. you have to experience experience. That's you know? <laughs> All you can do is teach someone how to do something. When I was at my uh, um, hairdresser today, she had a student with her that was observing and everything, and she was walking through the different steps, and she explained, one of the things she explained is, you can't talk about someone's hair 
you can't do this with everyone. She's like, I can talk to you because I know Shekinah, and I know she doesn't mind us talking about this. But she's standing there, and she's cutting my hair, and she's explaining to this lady what she's doing. But until that lady does it, she has no idea. She has no idea. And there's a lot of times that Christians, or uh, let's say people who are exposed to Christianity, are invited to a place of repentance. A place of turning their life around. And you can use many different words to, to describe what it is. Well, it's saying you're sorry for your sins. It's saying that you don't have the answers. It's really trying to open yourself up to allowing God to direct your path and, and, and showing him that you are willing, you want to take his way. But you know that it's more than just saying words. Like everyone here has repented at some point in their life. And you know that the experience was different than all of the words I just said. Those are some of the things that you go through the motions. But how do you explain? How do you describe Passover? And that is the thing. I love that. As Sid pointed out, when they're doing that Seder, they go through each of the items and explain why. That's exactly what Jesus did. He just didn't do, he didn't do it their way. He said, this is my body. Yeah. He didn't say, this is the unleavened bread. You know, and this is the, he said, this is my body. He said, this is my blood. He, he unpacked it, and they partook of it, not as believers. Because they didn't know what you know, was going to happen yet. Just, let me ask you something about that, not as believers. Um, I, my, it's my contention that only believers can receive. You can serve unbelievers, and they can drink it, of course. Alter to their <laughs> detriment, <laughs> but uh, you know, but uh, they cannot receive it. And we use the word and that that is very important. You should know it, but right. have you received it? And well, the meaning: Do you receive? Have you received the significance of this? And, and, and there's no the way for anyone to know that except. You know, within ourselves yeah. to know what that, just like a salvation experience. John? Yeah. When he, look at the way he speaks about a body, he says. <clears throat> he took the bread and he broke it. And he told him to eat it. This is my body. Okay. What he's doing is he is he is the broken bread that's being broken. Yeah. And he tells them to eat it, which is symbolically means to accept. He used yeah. symbology. Yeah, yeah. And the body, they didn't understand the body the way we do. We understand we have a body and inside we reside inside, like a shell. They did. They they understood the body as the whole person. They didn't have them. They didn't understand like we do it. Right, so, right. So he's described his body being broken, <laughs> and that they should accept that he has done that, and he's done it with all of him. Wow. That's kind of deep. Like, so John makes the point that the Jews did not see like the body as just being this fleshly shell. The body was the whole person. You remember how uh, you know yeah. Jesus said you're to love, you know, with all your heart, with all your mind, with, with everything. All of your person is what it was saying. And so when Jesus is breaking the bread. He's not just saying my body is broken as in my flesh is broken. He's saying my person is yeah. broken. Everything that I am is broken for you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's beautiful and horrifying at the and same he's time. He which means to accept what I just said. Yeah, right. Right. <clears throat> wow. Diane. Um, we had a teaching years ago <clears throat> about communion and it Related to the four cups of communion, and they referred to this. But it's it's uh, interesting. The lifting of burdens, and you take communion, and the blessing you get from that, 
the deliverance of bondage right. take place because we can have healing yes. because the blood of Jesus is there. Right. Redemption, obviously, and then adoption, the blood covenant. Right. So it, it is deep. It is more than just an act to remember the seven right. degrees from the beginning to remember them. But the blood has to be applied, had to be applied on the doorpost. And now it's in a different way. Yeah. But it's all about the blood of Jesus. A Amen. I like that. I like that. These are the things that, that this that can take place in your life if you're receptive mm -hmm. in receiving that communion. I love that for sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, that covenant he was talking about. It, it, of course, it's like, uh, uh, um, Jeremiah 31 and, uh, and um, it's in Ezekiel 2, Ezekiel uh, 36 somewhere. But anyway, that day is coming, says the Lord, that I'm going to make a new covenant with the people of Israel, the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I looked, when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt. Because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God. They will be my people. And yeah. But that's the covenant. It yeah. says basically the same thing in, in uh, Ezekiel 30, 36. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's that covenant. Yes. And, and, and that he is proclaiming yes. here, I'm making this covenant. You know, it's interesting. He, it's only one person. He's the only person that could make a covenant right. with, uh, with God for the people. Right. And Jesus was the only right. one. I mean, nobody He's else. No man one. could make that covenant. Right. It had to be God has to yes. make that covenant. Yes, and so absolutely. That's another thought. Absolutely. That's good. So, Kevin. You know, he's, he's also talking about, you know, that new covenant. And they're used to dumping all the blood out and, and getting rid of the blood and not ingesting the blood. So this is, this is all brand new. And so this new covenant is ingesting the blood, symbolically, and also the flesh. <laughs> now, they're used to ingesting the, the flesh as part of, of, of the um, <clears throat> right. mm -hmm. yeah but now now you, you're adding the blood to that but in in weird ways God, <clears throat> Jesus is telling them your your this new covenant is going to have me inside of you right. and this is a different way of saying I'm going to write this on your hearts mm -hmm. and I'm going to I'm yeah. I'm literally going to be within you yes and you know, then you go to his scriptures where you know, the very power yeah. of, of God resides within those filled with the Spirit. And it's just, it's just, I mean, those disciples were unpacking this for, for years afterwards. Oh, for sure they are. I yeah. mean, there, there's just so are. many. Yeah, we still are yeah. unpacking it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, so there's, there's a lot... You know, we've said a lot as far as like the, the the Passover part of that meal. But what do you think about him saying, Truly I say to you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day in which I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Like, <laughs> all right? Trying to give them a little bit of understanding. Right. He's trying to, like he's trying to open those eyes to see. So the, the time has come, and we are going to be together again, but there's things that we must walk through. We're going to celebrate together, but, but we've, got, we've got, there's something about the way that Jesus says this that is so, he's, it's so hopeful. Could he be talking about, <clears throat> I want to, possibly, the marriage feast. Right? Uh, of the, when he comes back for his bride. Yes. And we're taken up. And we're going to, he's going to drink anew with you. Right. 
I, I, that's the way I've always taken it's it. It's so I'm celebratory just, and I think it's exciting. Be, I think he's talking about we're going to drink it again. And Right. But not now. <clears throat> yeah. We've got some things to get through, Mindy. Yeah, I was on my lunch break my some, uh, earlier this week or last week. There was a girl on I saw on TikTok. Well, a young lady. Um, and she was so excited. And I don't know if any of you have seen this, and I never saw it. And I mean, it make to me it makes perfect sense that we just had we just hadn't seen it before. But she makes links to his first miracle, to the Passover, the shedding of his blood, dying on the cross, and three days later, rising again, and the 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 marriage supper that he's mentioning here, um, because the I was just trying to find out. I don't know where the where the the story is of the first miracle of turning water into wine, but the wine is symbolic of the blood, and he, this first miracle, he makes that. Oh, okay. And then the, the, in the introduction of the story, he talks about on, and on the third day. Yeah. And of course, it's at a wedding, right? And the, she said so much more. She was so excited, it was hard to take yeah. it all in. <laughs> <laughs> is she on to something? Yeah. How cool is that? You know, it is pretty yeah. exciting to think about mm -hmm. his very first right thing that he does in it, you know, mm -hmm. in his ministry is is mm -hmm. a picture of what's yet right. to come and nobody I mean obviously right. nobody was even gonna think about that. He hadn't even started telling them about his death, burial, and resurrection yet. Right. And what's awesome about mm -hmm. when you go through the gospels is that Jesus does everything, every single thing he does has layered in it yeah. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I love his first miracle being turning water into wine because as you said, the wine represents the blood. It also represents the spirit, right? Which makes mm -hmm. sense. The blood yeah. of Jesus Christ is the it's reason the why we can be filled with the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, his yeah. death is what made that possible. Oh, yeah. And But at the same time, he's doing this. Basically, Jesus' first miracle was to be the life of the party. <laughs> and I think a lot of a lot of um, Christians don't recognize that our neighbors would be more receptive to the love of Christ if we would show the love of Christ by celebrating the things that are important in their lives rather than us waiting for them to celebrate the things that are important to us. Amen. Another thing she mentioned was that it was the new wine. In correlation linked to the New Testament mm -hmm. and it was just really cool I, I shared it with Kevin if you want to show it to me later yeah. absolutely <laughs> talking about layer upon layer he's talking here about I will no I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God and we know through studying the scripture that he was not talking about, when he talked about the kingdom of God, he was not talking about heaven. Right. He was talking about the church. The church. And that the church is also his body. Right. And when that was made new on the day of Pentecost, we partook of that wine Ooh. new because the wine. That's good. Yeah. That is good. Oh, that's good. So Woo. it was like a layer upon layer there. <laughs> yeah. He will taste right. of it again right. probably at the marriage supper. Yeah. Absolutely. But we are his body. Yes. And we tasted of it anew. Woo. That is really on good. On the New Testament. You know, in that New Testament on the day of Pentecost, yeah. the church was born. Yes. yes. That's really good. Woo! <laughs> that is really good. He literally was filled, too. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that is really good, John. Life is in the blood. You accept yes. the blood, you get the life. Right? <laughs> and that more abundantly. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. All right. Deb? I'm seeing a promise and a caution. They don't mention it by name, but I read all four accounts, and Judas was there. He was there when Jesus washed the feet. He was there during the full meal. He was there when he offered his body and his blood to everyone, even Judas. And um, in Exodus 12, 23, when he was talking about the death angel, 
When the Lord sees the blood, he will not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. But you had to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go wandering outside. You had to be in the house. You have to be in the body mm -hmm. in order to wow. have the that protection. protection. Wow, Amen. that's really good. Amen. And Deb, that is powerful. That is a super powerful point. And it illustrates, yes. I think, really well what I was trying to con convey when I talked about communion is illustrating the way we partake of something that makes us one. Salvation is not just an individual experience. You know, it's something that we have to seek out for ourselves with fear and trembling. But we actually need each other. <laughs> the body of Christ doesn't exist as a solitary person except as Christ Jesus. He said, it's going to take all of you to be my body. Mm -hmm. And when we partake of communion, it, one of the things that makes it a communing is not just us communing with God, it's that, that oneness with each other. Because if you'll notice, when we partake of communion, you know, whoever's leading communion usually says, now we're going to, you know, you're going to come and you're going to get, you know, the juice and the, and the bread or whatever, and we're all going to partake together. together. And you know, that's actually what Paul was getting aggravated with the Corinthians about. He's <laughs> like, you people are getting off work. Y'all are eating all the bread, drinking all the wine. Other people are coming in. Y'all are doing it all at different times. You've made a mess of this. This is what's supposed to be happening. And he was, he was not just telling them this is a more serious thing to partake of than you are acting it out as. He was also saying you are not taking care of each other. Right. This is a time in which you come together and you partake together of that life, you know? And yes, it is symbolic, but yes, it is a real experience, Amen. you know? Amen. And I mean, y'all think about it. When you go down in baptism, honestly, what is that doing? We empty that thing, we fill it up every week and warm it up. It is not special. It is just basically, uh, it's a baptismal pool, but it's basically just a giant tub with a seat in it. And when you explain to people, you do this, and it, it washes away your sins, it's like, how? Yeah. There's no soap. Right, there's no soap. How does that happen? How are you going to get my heart clean? And so it is sim symbolic, a burying and baptism, but when you do it in faith, it is so powerful because you come out of there and some people you can't get them out of there because they're like, this is amazing. Right. Like, this is amazing. This is, I'm, I feel so different. I feel so clean. Look at what God did. That is exactly the kind of experience that you're wanting to pour out in, into people's lives when you connect them to Christ Jesus. Like, no, you can't explain it. How are you going to explain Diane, how are you going to explain that walking with the Lord all these years has saved your life time and time again? Saved your sanity time and time again? Saved your health time and time again? You could give them examples. It doesn't, it's just words. Yeah. It's just words yeah. until they experience it. Right. And often you don't realize until later when you look back, oh, he helped me so much to get through this. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, yes. I really understand why. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. So, um, as we before we leave this passage of scripture, we're going to run through our SPEC. Do you see any sin to avoid in this passage? What about promises to claim? <laughs> yes, a new kingdom. That he takes our place. That he takes our place. Yes, tread for many. Yes. 
His blood being shed for us? Man. What about examples to follow? Do this in memory. Do this in memory. Mm -hmm. Good. Also, even though they may not have understood what was going on, and even though they had been sorrowful about the things that he said, that's what it said back in verse 19. Yeah. And even though he was telling them, we're fixing to face some bad circumstances, still they sung a yeah. hymn. Right. They turned with worship in response. Right. And I think that's a great example to follow yes. because sometimes we go right. through things. Yes. And we don't feel like worshiping, and we don't, you know, we don't feel the joy yeah. of the hymn. Right. We feel sorrow, but yeah. yet, if we'll just turn that around into rejoicing for him, yeah. I think that's a great example. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yeah. think of, like, as Mindy said, it was traditional to sing hymns, basically praising God for bringing them out of Egypt, for right. saving them from, you know, for, for saving them from that Passover angel. Exactly what you were saying, Mom, is when we are in the midst of something or about to go through something, the best thing you can do yes. is praise God for what He has done. Yes. Because it reminds this old person yes. here oh. my God is big enough to defeat yes. Pharaoh. My God is big enough to make the death angel pass over without affecting me. Amen. God Hallelujah. did that. Yes. You know, God can roll back the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And you find your faith being stirred and suddenly it it's time to pray in the garden, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know that whatever comes next, you'll be able to say, not my will, but thine be done because I have accepted that you are big enough to take me through whatever is ahead. Yeah. Man. Y'all make me so excited about Jesus. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, what about commands to keep? Mm -hmm. um, we'll go back to examples and add obedience. Mm -hmm. Obedience, yeah. Examples. When you don't know what's going on, you know, still know how to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Did we start at 22 today or 21? 22. Yes, ma'am. He's uh, offering himself. We have to accept. Yes. Right. Yeah. Kevin. And Karen added uh, promises to be kept. Uh, receive the same things he has in Revelation 5, 12, which says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, uh, last week we had uh, some grow and go assignments. So we're just going to go ahead and ask, well, did anyone find opportunities to speak openly with strangers or people that they were... Not mannequins, Kevin. We didn't speak to the mannequins. There wasn't, you know, there were a couple people, you know, we were able to, to talk to, but nothing of note. That said, we had some awesome conversations with Javi and Danielle and Sage. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got a chance to um, tell a, U a little Ukrainian lady online that our God was big enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and that we were praying for her and her family. Yes. <clears throat> that's really good. That's really good. Um, it wasn't with strangers, but I had the opportunity um, this week to, uh, one of my coworkers, one of the sales guys, just sort of in the middle of a conversation said, so what do you, what do you think? Do you think the Lord is coming soon? Do you think that the, what did he say, the, the return, the return of, of Christ is soon? I was like, yes. Oh, but let me tell you why. And let me tell you the things we're going to have to walk through. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do it without Jesus. And, right. and the Lord gave me like several minutes to just like pour out into this person who never expressed interest at any previous time. And I'm mm -hmm. super excited that the events of the world are stirring people's hearts. Yes. Right. Amen. And Amen. may he continue to right. stir hearts. Right. Amen. You know? Yeah. Um, 
Deb uh, had also mentioned looking for ways to encourage our brothers and sisters. Yeah, and I was thinking I had a chance to do that with family. Nice. Members, brothers and sisters. And yeah. Quite some long talks with four of them. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Wonderful. Anyone else? Diane. Well, we've been able to do that with our little on the phone Bible study. <clears throat> but I was in uh, home, our Office Depot or the Office Max, whatever it is, across the road. And uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was checking out, and I can't remember exactly how this started with this woman, but um, somehow it came up to uh, about times or something. And I, I said, well, it's good to know where you're going, or, or I know where I'm going, I think is what I said to her. Or what and, she said. Huh? Or is that what you said to her? I think I said, but she said something that precipitated it. Anyway, mm -hmm. so... In other words, I knew this was an opening, but I here I had my bag. Now I was just handing it to me. I had this You're ready to go yeah. behind me, you know. So um, <clears throat> I told her Jesus is coming back soon, and uh, you know we need to. And she says, "Well, but I'm Catholic." <laughs> so Whoa! She, <laughs> so she probably is. Let me go put this back. I said, <laughs> "He's waiting first. for you." He's oh, waiting wow. for you. And then I said, be blessed. And I had to go. That was good, Diane. Diane is so... That was really good. She's so cautious about this. We were at IHOP <coughs> a month or so ago. We're waiting to be seated. And there was a young girl sitting there. And it, I guessed that she was there waiting for an employment interview or something like that. So Diane came over and said in her just so gentle way, do you believe in heaven? <laughs> and the girls the girl there by by and she proceeded to just lay it out there. And the girl was I was amazed. Yeah. The girl became very involved. Yeah. In the conversation. Yeah. And I'm telling you exactly. Jeannie's right. That's the Lord. That quickening of the spirit that says this is this is time. Yeah. That's right. Karen mentions uh, giving out a few cards and I, I know she also invited her nurse at the hospital to church. Yeah. They got to talking and, and uh, um, she said she was looking for a church, so it was a good opportunity for her. Yeah, that's awesome. But, you know, we have family members, our kids, some of them, they don't want to hear anything. They, yeah. They've all been to the church and all that. Yeah. Um, there's only one that does. But anyway, so you just have to be so careful what you say. And just little tiny seeds. Right. Yeah. Just plant seeds. 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 Show it, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know. yeah. Mindy? I had just texted a couple of uh, ladies that we really... I don't know if we've seen it all. Well, no, we saw some at the when we had our outside services. Um, just to say hi, how are yeah. you doing? We didn't have long conversations or nothing. But, you know, I'm but again, them. seeds. Yeah, just planting those seeds of love yeah. and encouragement. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, um, before we close out, um, I've asked John to share uh, uh, something that he has seen uh, with us. So, uh, John, if you would come and just share for a moment before we leave. As you know, in the past, the Lord has privileged me to see and understand or hear or see something. And uh, about two weeks ago, I experienced something I'm going to share with you. I, uh, I saw a man leave his house. He came out of the house. 
into his neighborhood and he started to walk down the street. And as he walked down the street, he noticed his neighborhood seemed different, seemed strange. He kept walking and seemed to be changing as he walked along. And uh, he wasn't happy about that because he didn't want any change. You know, he lives there. He got to the corner and he crossed the street. He went to the next block and it got even worse. Things changed. Things weren't what he knew at all. It was almost like he was didn't understand what was going on at all, how he could be walking and not know the stores and stuff that he was at. And he looked really upset. His face was kind of red, really upset. And uh, let me interpret that for him. What the Lord is saying is that this man is seeing changes take place. And we're going to see changes take place. We see them internationally, even today. We see them in laws that are being passed. We see it in immoral people who are rebel. There are people who, in positions they don't belong. And those conditions are going to worsen as time goes on. The next block, it got even worse. Where we are now, things are going to get worse than where, than where it is now. And hopefully we still have a nice revival, but things are going to get worse. And this man was experiencing a lot of hate building up in him. Because... He didn't like these changes, you know. And we're not to be in that condition either, way. you know. We're, we're not part of the world. We're drawn from the world. We're in a different place. Yeah. We're not in a place where we should be anger and, no. and have animosity right. about what's going on around us. Those, right. That's just an environment that the Lord is creating in these end times. If you don't like it, that's too bad. He's got plans, you know. Right. And if you see him and you don't like him, it doesn't matter. Right. And he's going to use people. There are people that you're going to see being used in terrible ways. Maybe even people you know. Where it isn't that the, the person would never do that. The Lord doesn't make people sin. These are people who have <coughs> the ability inside ready to go. And they just act on things. So we don't want to be like this man and be so upset about things that we see changing around us. You know. Yeah. I mean... We're, we're protected from all those things. People don't like change. We don't like change. I don't like change much. Depends on what it is. But people don't generally like change rapidly anyway. Right. I mean, you slowly get used to it, but not quickly. Yeah. This man was seeing this happen quickly, and I think we're going to see things happen quickly. Yeah. And we're not to have that affect us as Christians, right. as believers. Yeah. We still have to have the real person inside stay that way. Till the end. Yeah. You know? And so I think it, it's kind of a warning. I mean, the Lord's going to watch over us. Yes. You yes. stay close to him under your way, you'll be just fine. That's good. Amen. All that's good, John. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Yeah, certainly we are seeing changes and uh, grateful uh, for the Lord reminding us. Some of us You know? Oh, changes. yeah, for sure. And for the Lord to remind us that, hey, no matter how shocking those changes are, right? I like that. I think the best thing he said was right at the end. Stay under his wings. I like it. Yes. yes. That's right. That is safety. Oh, that that's is safety, news. man. That is comfort. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's just take a moment to thank the Lord for this time together. Lord, we are so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we still have to have freedom to come together and to worship you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this precious family that has come together to worship you. Please help us, Lord, to shine your light each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus.